not encouraging or advising anyone to modify their firearms. This is for entertainment and educational purposes only. What's up everyone? I got the grip module and mainspring housing anodized. I'm gonna cover how I prep the parts, the process, some considerations and details. Once again, I will plug my own video about anodizing. There's a lot of information in there. If you're curious about the anodizing process, link is in the description. Let's get into it. First off, why didn't I anodize this myself? I know how to anodize. I've done anodizing before, but that was type two decorative anodizing. Type three hard anodizing is a bit different and requires more equipment. The electrolyte needs to be chilled to about 32 degrees Fahrenheit and a much higher current density is needed, meaning the power supplies get more and more expensive. The equipment required is gonna be cost prohibitive for most hobbyists or at-home chemists. I blended and contoured some areas. I think I showed that in a previous episode. When I took the grip off after I was done test firing it, I broke every edge on it and smoothed some more things out. Anodizing can soften the finish a little. It may change the luster of the metal. This is due to the formation of the oxide structure and it's usually more pronounced if the part is dyed and sealed. But the finish you start with will largely dictate the finish you get post anodizing, so it's best to start out with the most uniform finish possible. The grip module and mainspring housing came from Chile with a really nice, fine, media blasted finish. I wanted to restore that finish in the places I modified. I emailed Chile and asked what media they use. Matt Chile referred me to a McMaster part number, so I ordered that. It was a fine grit glass bead and aluminum oxide mix. After blasting, I blew the pieces off with compressed air, then I inspected them closely under varying lighting conditions to make sure I was happy with the uniformity of the finish. I also washed them with dish soap and warm water to give the anodizing provider the cleanest part possible, even though they would be cleaning and deoxidizing them as well. I had a local company anodize these for me. Due to privacy concerns, I will not be sharing specifics. Sometimes the company I work for uses this provider for anodizing and other metal finishing, so I'm familiar with the quality of their work. I called them up and asked if they could throw a couple small pieces in their Type 3 tank the next time they are running a batch. They said, sure, bring them on in. I discussed the specifics of these parts and what I wanted done with the quality manager there. I told him I wanted type 3 anodizing in black, which means after the hard anodizing process is done, they dye it black and seal it. These are both 7075 alloy. I emailed Chile and confirmed this. It wasn't directly listed in the grip information. The anodizing finish between different alloys of aluminum, say 6061 versus 7075, can look a bit different. So likely some different process parameters are needed. That's probably why the quality manager needed to know that. The zinc content of 7075, which makes it harder and more wear resistant, can turn the anodizing finish brown. So sometimes a pre-treatment is needed for 7075 that isn't required for 6061. I explained to him that I wanted the most uniform finish possible on the outside of these parts for aesthetic purposes. Then I showed him all of the spots that interact with sliding components as well. I didn't want him to rack it anywhere that wear resistance is key or any place that would be visible. The rack is the thing that holds the workpiece in the electrolyte bath and makes the electrical connection. This turns the workpiece into the anode of the electrolytic cell. Where the rack is in intimate contact with the workpiece will not be anodized because the electrolyte can't get to the surface. The workpiece needs to be in solid contact with the rack, especially with type three anodizing, which runs much higher current densities. He told me he would rack the grip through these holes right here and the mainspring housing through this hole. I can see that's what he did. There are little specks where the metal wasn't anodized and didn't take the dye. They had my parts one week. They charged me $106 and I am very pleased with the result. The grip module and mainspring housing absolutely need to be anodized. Sheely states this on their website too. There are critical areas of this grip module and mainspring housing that require increased hardness and wear resistance from the aluminum oxide layer. I would also like to present some of my own nerdy evidence to support this. I can tell that these parts were designed and dimensioned with anodizing in mind. When these parts were raw, I measured a total gap of four thou, so two on either side, between here on the grip module and here and here on the mainspring housing. After anodizing, there's no play in this direction at all. 
I measured these after anodizing, they measured line to line with the accuracy of my calipers. That means they're somewhere between line to line and half a thou clearance. Hard anodizing layer thickness is generally around two thou. This is the default thickness specified in mil spec mil A 8625 if no other thickness is specifically called out. In the US that might be why two thou has become somewhat standard. I also confirmed this with the quality manager. The layer thickness on these should be close to two thou based on their process parameters. That means every surface should have grown by one thou or half the thickness of the oxide layer. One thou here, one thou here, one thou here, and one thou here. That equals four thou total and explains why my four thou clearance has left the chat. Regarding the finish, you can see some very small bright spots around the edges of the projections that provide texture. They're barely noticeable. There's not very many of them. They did a very good job with this anodizing, but this is to be expected. Anodizing is an electrochemical process. The surface of the part is charged and that attracts the ions in the electrolyte solution where they react with the surface to form aluminum oxide. Sharp edges cause charge concentrations. This results in oxide layer formation around the sharp corner like this. You will only see this if the part is dyed. This is why on page 17 of mil A 8625 rev F, they specify minimum radii on edges and inside corners based on oxide layer thickness. This is to prevent a discontinuous oxide layer, which could result in corrosion or accelerated wear. If we want texture here, we have to have these sharp edges. That's why some of these little localized discolorations are largely unavoidable. The mil spec calls out a 16th inch minimum radius for an oxide layer thickness of two mils. These guys aren't even a 16th across. They would be a little smooth bump and offer no traction. This is just a little detail to keep in mind if you have anything anodized or buy a $7,000 pistol with an aluminum grip and out of the box it looks like this. For this first build, I wanted to buy the raw aluminum grip because I figured there may be some areas I would want to blend or change the profile of. The machining on this grip was very nice and the shape of it agreed with my hands. So there wasn't really anything I needed to do. If I were to do this again, I would buy the anodized grip module that Chile offers. It's only 50 bucks more and it comes with a black nitride mag catch. I had to send my raw mag catch with the slide and frame to be nitride treated because I wanted it black. So I paid 56 extra dollars for it to be a little smoother and nicer looking around here and maybe have a few less sharp edges. Identifying a local service provider and having it done was easy for me, but it may not be for some. I will, of course, have to check fitment with components during final reassembly. My trigger shoe is just a little too tight now, which is good. That means I fit it well initially and didn't take too much material off. This two-tone finish is going to look fucking sick, by the way. Anyways, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.